All right, hello everybody. This is gonna be a tutorial on how to auto mount your SMB shares from your Synology NAS onto any Linux system. This includes your virtual machines and Raspberry Pis. The way that I use this is I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 with a one gig connection hooked up to my network. It also has a card reader for my camera's SD cards. Then, whenever I'm done shooting, I just plop the SD card into the card reader and it automatically adds the new photos in based off the date they were shot. This means that not only are my photos automatically backed up very quickly, but I can also organize them really easily. Plus, it's going just directly onto my Synology, which has a massive amount of storage to use. And with the one gig connection on the Raspberry Pi 4s, I can actually transfer files faster than they can be pulled off of my camera's SD cards. This leads to a really easy way to back up my photos and make sure that I never lose any photos when I format a card. I'm going to be doing another video on this entire workflow, so subscribe if you'd like to see it. So for this video, I'm going to be using one of the Linux virtual machines that's already running on my Synology. It's got a pure command line interface, so I'm going to be using SSH to connect to it. So our first step here is going to be to go into DSM for our Synology. And we're going to do two things. First, we're going to make sure SMB is enabled. And second, we're also going to create a basic user with only permissions to the drives we want to make sure that if anything happens to this password, we're still okay. So the first thing we're actually going to want to do here is to go into control panel and create the new user. So go into control panel, user, and hit create. We're just going to give this very basic user permissions. And for this, I'm going to be using a very basic password of test1234. And this is where we're going to make sure it's got limited permissions. So we're only going to give it access to this for tutorial page. If you would like it to only be able to read, you can select that here as well. I'm not going to give it any limits. And for increased security, we're going to deny it all these privileges. All right, so now the user has been created. Now we're just going to make sure that SMB is set up. Most of you will already have this set up, but if not, click on this here. Another thing that really helps is to set a static IP address for your server. This is a much easier way to connect back to it. I've already covered this in other videos, but if you see here, I have the static IP address of 192.168.1.123 for this server. All right, so now we're done on the Synology side. Now we're going to configure it on our Linux server. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and SSH into the Linux server. Make that a little bigger so you can see it. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and SSH into the Linux server. If you don't know how to do this, I've covered this in a video already. All right, so the first step we're going to want to do is install CIFS Utilities. This is a Linux app that allows you to connect to SMB very easily. It's a great service. So to do this, we're first going to make sure our apps are up to date with sudo app git update. All right, so now it's just making sure all my packages are up to date. And now we're actually going to go through and install the CIFS utilities. With sudo app git install CIFS dash utilities. The nice thing about using app git is it automatically installs any dependencies, so you really don't have to worry that much. However, it also means it can take a while. All right, so now it's installed. I'm gonna go ahead and just clear it. So now we're gonna to have to decide where we would like to place our folder. For me, I'm just gonna have it in my users folder. So I'm just gonna make a directory here and we'll call it server. So now in my home folder, I've got this server empty directory. It's important that's empty because this is going to be our mounting point. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and figure out what the current user's ID is. This allows us to say which users are allowed to access the share. In Linux, it's a simple command, ID. 
So you can see my UID right here is 1000. That is the default for the first user. So it's almost always going to be that. But if you want to specify for a group or a specific user, you can specify that in the command line arguments. So now we're going to go ahead and manually mount the server to ensure that it works by doing All right, so I'll go ahead and walk you through the arguments we put in here. So sudo mount runs mount as root, dash t allows us to specify the type, cifs is the type we're using, dash o allows for optionals, then we've got a list of arguments here that are comma separated, which you can use for different things. The required ones for this are really going to be username and password, the username of the group we made on our Synology earlier today for this, and password equals the password we specified, and these are all comma separated. Comma, the UID equals whatever the user ID was that we found just earlier. Then backslash backslash, the IP address of our NAS followed by backslash and the share. If there's a space, you need to add single quotes. And then finally, your mount point. That This is that server folder we made earlier. So we'll just hit enter. All right, so now let's move into the server. So we can see here that we've got access. Now let's see if we can write something. All right, so I just made a test.txt file, and we're going to see if we go into our Synology, if we can see it on there. So I'm back on that, and we're going to go, and look, right here, we found that it did actually mount successfully. So we've done this, right? Problem is, now let's just do something normal and reboot it. All right, so I've just rebooted the server. It's gonna take a minute to come back on. All right, so now I've rebooted the server. Let's see what happens when we try to hit it again. Unfortunately, there's nothing there. That's because every time the Linux server is shut down, it unmounts everything. So what do we wanna do? We're going to want to specify that every time we boot up, we also mount the server. So we do this by editing the fstab file. But first, we're going to want to do something for security. Anything that's in the fstab file is going to be able to be read by anyone. This means your password will be able to be read by anyone with access to the server. This might not be a big deal to you, in which case you can skip this step, but if it is, there's a really easy thing to do. So we're going to go in and we are going to, as root, create a file. So we're going to go in and do... Using sudo su, I'm now logged in as root. We'll just clear this to make it easier to read. And we are going to create a file. We're going to create a file called SMB server in the root folder. The period at the end makes a hidden file, and a lot of people will use SMB credentials, but if you're going to be connecting to multiple servers with multiple different usernames, that's going to get confusing. So I've just created it, and now we're going to edit it. All we're going to be doing here is taking out those two arguments of username and password and instead putting them in here. First line username. All right, so we just did username and password and put those here. So now to save it, we're going to hit escape colon WQ exclamation point. All right, now we want to make sure only the root can access this file by doing chmod. 700, which says only root can access this, and the file name. 
All right, so now that's locked down. Now I'm just gonna exit out to go back to my normal user account. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen again, make it easier. So now we're going to want to edit our fstab file. So your fstab file allows you to specify things to do on boot up. So we're going to go ahead and edit it using sudo vim. It's stored in etc fstab. So it's simple to do this. We're going to first edit it by hitting I. And we're going to go in and just create a new line. When putting this command in the fstab file, it changes the order of things a little bit here. So first we're going to type. So when we're setting this up, we're first going to type in the server location that we did earlier, space, where we're going to be saving this. And this should be a direct path followed by CIFS, the credentials equals and the credentials location then the UID followed by a zero zero to not have any additional arguments. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and save that doing escape Q WQ exclamation point. All right, so now the big question is, is, it, is this gonna work on boot up? You don't actually have to reboot your machine to test this out. You can simply do sudo mount dash A. And there was an error. All right, figured out what the error was. And once again, reinforces the rule, never add a space into a file path. So in FSTAB, the single quotes do not work, nor does the regular backslash for a space not work. Instead, since everything is space delimited, you're going to have to use the escape sequence which is backslash zero four zero for spaces. Never, ever, ever use a space in a file path. It always causes headaches. But now that I've done that, let's see if it works. All right, now is the big question. Is it going to work? And it appears it may have actually worked. So let's go in and see the, the server. And look, our files are there, and we can edit them. All right, so now the final test. Is this gonna work on boot up? Let's find out. Just gonna go ahead and reboot it. Since it... All right, it's booted up. The server is there. Is there gonna be anything in it? All right, and all of our files are there. That means every time we reboot this, it's gonna automatically reconnect to the server. Another thing, if for whatever reason, when in boot up, you can't connect to the network, or if there's another issue, you can still do the sudo mount A to remount the servers anytime you need them to. All right, thanks for watching. Hope this tutorial was helpful. Bye. Remember kids, never put spaces in file paths.